part of our, our series before. They've run USF 2000, some of them even in this particular category here at St. Petersburg. So they have a feel for the racetrack. They know the ins and outs. They know, they know where it's going to be. The track very slippery, as we know. But those drivers who are brand new, some drivers like Aliram Zendeli, right, the Albanian driver from Germany who, uh, who has never been here before for TJ Speed. He looked pretty impressive out of the gate. You go further down to a Joel Grandforth in eighth and a Reese Ushijima in ninth. Those drivers have never been here before. They've never been on this racetrack and able to bang out, what, 14, 15 laps, set the baseline, and now you go, got to go right into qualifying. Green flag has waved at the start-finish line, so cars now making their way out of pit lane and around. It will take, what, a lap or two before they two. start to get up to yeah. speed, get those tires up to temperature, and really start to get after it. The other part that they'll want to take care of in the first lap or two is trying to find themselves some clear space. You don't want traffic around you. You want op optimum clear conditions for that flying lap. Yeah, one of the big things is uh, the simple fact that throughout the, a weekend like this, the track never stops changing. When they first came out on the racetrack, it was very new. Right, We had uh, just a couple of the, the SRO drivers were out there, and then they were on track, so not a lot of rubber down. Uh, as soon as uh, Indy Next gets out there and then IndyCar gets out there, the track's going to keep changing. It's going to be a lot grippier than it was this morning. So their first couple of laps, not only are they going to try to clean off these tires a bit because they're on sticker tires, so let's clean off some of that mold residue that's left on the tire. Let's get those to where they need to be. Then we'll get a feel for how much grip's actually here and how deep we can go into some of these corners. So again, Kiko Porto was the fastest driver out of the gate, a 110.909 fastest driver in morning practice. Right behind him, Liram Zandelli, followed by Michael D'Orlando, the USF 2000 champion from last year. Miles Rowe was in championship contention as well last year in USF 2000. He moved up with Pat Grace in the number 99. Francesco Pizzi, though, Mexican driver who uh, impressively in the number 55 for TJ Speed, P5 in his opening session. We're wondering what Pizzi's going to be able to do. And, you know, anytime you come out of the gate like this, you're trying to make a statement, right? You're like, I'm here to win races. I'm not going to finish 10th. I want to win races. I think P5 for Francesco, he's probably pretty happy with that. I, I think that is a very impressive debut in the USF Pro 2000 series. You mentioned Kiko Porto, who was the quickest in this morning's practice session. Not really a surprise. He's come up through the, the different levels up to the USF Pro 2000 series. This is his second season in the series now, finishing seventh in the championship last year. Now ready to take that next step, it appears, to hopefully get his hands on that scholarship money. That's it. Everybody's running after uh, that scholarship cash to be able to move up to the next level, to the Indy Next program, over $650,000 up for grabs in this category to move to Indy Next to 2024. It's a very lucrative prize for any young driver to get that kind of money to help continue their way up the ranks. Again, first couple of laps, no real need to jump at the time sheet to let you know where everybody is, because they're all you know, just trying to get into, into the groove. Like I said, cleaning off the tires a little bit, getting a feel for the racetrack. In fact, it looks like one driver, a couple drivers potentially rolling into pit lane already, so drivers already down into pit lane. I wonder whether or not we'll see them just come in. That's uh, Christian Weir being one of them. And indeed, a red flag. I just picked that up, got a call from race control, red flag flying, everybody into pit lane. So a driver already potentially off the track somewhere here as it is red flag. So a, a, a rough start here as drivers just starting to get up to temperature, but very similar to what we saw earlier today. At the very least, they've cleaned the tires off, got a little scuff in them. They didn't go far enough into the point where they were getting really close to getting the temperatures up to the optimum, optimum temp and the tire pressures where they need to be, really just cleaning the tires off these first couple laps. We'll wait and see what the incident is out on track. Hopefully just a quick uh, cleanup and removal that we can get back to green flag action here in the USF Pro 2000. Uh, coming up next on the program is Indy Next and the NTT IndyCar Series with their uh, practice session. USF Pro 2000 will be out later on this afternoon as well. The first step, uh, excuse me, the uh, middle step now on the uh, ladder series up to uh, the USF Pro 2000 at the top. And uh, still have not seen where we might have this uh, issue out on track, but we do, so. Oh, it looks like we do have safety vehicles out on course. They're coming back. out, of, I think they're coming out of turn number nine right now. So out of turn number nine, potentially down into turn number 10. We've seen a lot of things happen in turn 10. It's that heartbreaking left-hander where a driver could potentially get into the barriers on the exit of that, or, or the entry of that corner, right kind of on the exit point. Little, you overcook it a little bit, you find yourself in the barriers pretty quickly, and time now winding down. This is going to play into the hands of some of the drivers with more seat time on this track if we eventually lose a considerable amount of what is already a shortened session. We had some issues earlier today, weren't able to get green as early as the schedule initially said, so 
potentially down into turn number 10. Ideally, we can get the camera shot of turn 10 to find out what happened over in that particular corner. As, Just uh, again, looking behind us, and you can see a couple of the uh, vehicles there as you do approach corner number 10, but we can't see exactly what the uh, what the issue is there and what the problem is. But you mentioned that the, the clock continues to run on this session for qualifying in the USF Pro 2000 series, and now we'll have to wait and see uh, exactly how long this is going to take to uh, clear up and whether or not we'll be able to get back to green in, uh, in an expedited manner, shall we say. Trying to look at some of the camera angles that we have at our disposal here. I don't see a good enough shot of where someone could potentially have some issues here. So again, that is that we believe over in turn number 10. No, there's turn, we're looking at turn 10. Don't see anything potentially there. Maybe just it's coming just before in turn just 10. before turn 10. So indeed, issues on the racetrack right now. Tough one, of course. We'll hopefully get things back underway here momentarily. Fastest driver in that opening lap, I believe, was Jace Denmark, but they only got one lap in the books. So obviously not playing the way we expected. Two laps, let me say, in the books for at least what, uh, 11 or 12 of the drivers, Jace Denmark, Michael D'Orlando, Jordan Missig, Salvador de Alba, and Miles Rowe, currently the uh, top five after the uh, the first couple of laps. A red flag for an instant, a driver off the racetrack, as we said, potentially over in turn number 10. No ability for us to see where that is at this point. So there you go, getting a call from uh, our TV production as well. They can't pick it up on any of their cameras either, so you want... So again, there you go, folks. We're kind of in the dark here right now. We can't tell you where an incident is on the racetrack. I've got no nothing from race control as of yet either. I'll, maybe I'll try to send a text off here, Todd. There you go. They're leading up towards race uh, uh, to corner number 10. Looks like they actually do have a car on the back of one of the steps towing vehicles, and they are moving it out of the way uh, right now. Can't really get a good look at the damage of it, but it'll come behind us just momentarily, and we'll get a better look at it. So but the rest of the safety vehicles also appear to be moving out of the way now to return to their stations to get back to some green flag action, hopefully pretty quickly. But just waiting for that uh, tow vehicle to come Ooh, by. And yeah, that's that one of the TJ speed cars. That might be Liram Zendeli. Let me see. Indeed, it's the number 10 machine who has had an issue here. That, I believe, is Liram Zendeli, the driver from Germany who will be running under the Albanian flag here throughout the 2023 season. A rough start for the young driver with F3 and F2 experience. We expect him to be a, cha a championship contender. Let me throw this out here for you. I talked to a couple of young drivers. They were asking me what kind of the, the secret to success was, number one, in St. Petersburg and throughout the season. And I said, when you come to St. Petersburg, do whatever you can to minimize and, if you can, eliminate mistakes. Because if you're trying to win a championship, don't be the contender who has issues and makes tr makes mistakes at St. Petersburg. Because you put yourself behind the eight ball, someone's going to make a mistake. In USF Pro 2000, Liram Zemdeli, the driver who had an issue, will get a better look at the machine as it comes down the front straightaway to try to get, maybe get a feel for where the damage is on the car. Flat spot of the tires, I can see that. Looks to be left, da left front damage. So yeah, damage to the car of Zendeli, front wing, left front. So you wonder whether or not he was coming through the corner and kind of tapped the, the wall a little bit. Whatever it may be, Zendeli had an issue, and that has been the first major occurrence, I guess, in the championship for USF Pro 2000. This is exactly what you don't want to do, as you mentioned. You want to have a, a, a smooth first event, and this is the the difficulty, maybe just a, a driver who has a, a pretty good level of experience over in Europe, racing F2 and F3, and just pushes a little bit too hard on the tires that aren't fully up to temperature, and those concrete walls that we will talk about, no doubt, many times throughout the rest of the, this weekend, wind up biting you and really taking that left front apart. Yeah, those of you who are trackside here, one of the biggest things about this particular race Track, especially considering the fact that it is located, it is situated essentially as the opening race of the year. It's zero forgiveness. There's no place where you can drop a wheel. You go to another purpose-built racetrack, let's throw them out there, the Mid-Ohio's, Barber, uh, Road America, whatever it may be. You drop a wheel there at one of the faster corners, you maybe go out, you, you may go four wheels off. You can't drop a wheel here. There's just nowhere to do it. If you go off the racetrack, you're in a concrete wall, and you're going to see what happens to Zendeli. You make a mistake, whether it's a front or the rear, whatever happens. Uh, when you're trying to cut a corner, uh, the, the, the risk is there if you're trying to cut it a little too tight. 
Green flag is waved, about 15 and a half minutes remaining in this qualifying session for USF Pro 2000. Cars are back, circulate out on track, so tires should come up to temperature pretty quickly. And now, in the final 15 minutes, it's let's go get what we can in this qualifying. Yeah, and I talked to a bunch of drivers I had mentioned earlier about the fact that you go out here on the first section to set a baseline, get, a, get, a, get comfortable with the car, see how it is, see what kind of grip level you have, and then try to bang off some consistent laps. I know I can do this lap time, whatever it may be. Kiko Porter did a 110.9. So he probably backed it down to a bunch of 111s. Just get comfortable, see what I can do. Now he wants to go out there, do a 111 on his first flying lap, and then go down a little bit deeper into the low 10s, maybe even the 9s, now that the, the grip levels have come up. But otherwise, putting some more pressure on these drivers with the 15 minutes remaining in the session, that's still going to give us potentially 7, 8, 9 laps. But what if another red flag comes out? These guys can't make any mistakes. They have to get the lap in. The, 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 the quickest they can. They call it getting a banker lap in. Let's get a really good lap in early, and then we can go to work. Try to give yourself something that will give you at least a positive starting position up towards the front of the field, and then you can try to That's improve it. a little bit. If you can get a little deeper in one of the corners, get another tenth, get another couple of tenths over the last few That's minutes it. of the qualifying session. That's what the objective is right now. And it's not always about going deeper into the brake zones. Yeah, as you get into a braking zone, you're gonna you're, you're gonna hammer. You get a really hard initial hit on the brakes, but the speed comes from when you get off the brakes. You're you're not gonna carry that brake in. The, the quicker you're off the brakes and back onto the throttle, that makes for a faster lap. You can't make it straight away any longer by going deeper, but you can make it longer by getting on the throttle earlier. You'll get exponentially higher top speed at the end of the straightaway. Is that the slow down to speed up methodology exactly sometimes? Slow in, fast out, right? So watching the drivers kind of get things rolling here right now. Christian Brooks has now gone to P1 on lap number four in the turn three motorsport machine. Christian Brooks in that number three goes P1. Long way to go for these drivers to get these heat into the tires to really get it where they need to be. Reese Ushijimi goes to second. Here comes Michael Orlando now. The reigning USF 2000 champion moving up, of course, with the Anderson Promotions. Now discount tire uh, scholarship, the driver development scholarship. He moves his way up into the USF Pro 2000 category. Orlando looking impressive out of the gate. Brooks in third. Ushijimi in uh, third spot. Brooks second. Jonathan Brown for turn three motorsport now up into fourth and Jace Denmark, who is so much a part of the USF 2000 championship fight last year, finds himself in the fifth spot, was a winner here last year as well. Jordan Missick now sixth, Jack William Miller seventh, Salvador de Alba eighth, Christian Weir ninth, and Bajoy Garb rounding out the top 10. But here comes Ricardo Escoto. Escoto now up into fourth. So a bunch of drivers making moves. We have one driver in the pit lane here already. That is one of the K. Howard driver development cars. That will be the number four of Ricardo Escoto. So here's one of the things we haven't talked about yet. A lot of the times in these sessions, if the qualified sessions long enough, you'll go out to the set of tires. You made changes after practice. You'll go out with a fresh set of tires. Lay the laps down, do the best lap you can, then come in and put fresh tires on. They could be a minor adjustment of the car, go back out in fresh tires, because you've only got four laps on those tires. They're good to go for a race distance. So come in, come in, make a minor adjustment, wing angle, suspension, put fresh rubber out, and go back out and see if you can't go quicker. And that's the other part of learning at the USF Pro 2000 level is managing tires, learning how to use them, and just distributing them throughout the race weekend. Because after the qualifying session, there's a race both tomorrow and on Sunday following the IndyCar race. Indeed. Lots of time to get the job done. To get, you want to get the best result you can. If that, if that means you're getting up speed throughout the entire weekend, and you give up a little in the first race to be really good in the second race. We're seeing here a lot of traffic actually as well. This is not really what you want in qualifying. You have to go too wide coming through some of the tougher corners. This is the turn 11 complex leading back to the big 180 degree hairpin of turn number 12, a crucial part of this racetrack. And a number of drivers are coming into pit lane. We're seeing adjustments made by a number of them. The number 91 of Salvador de Alba for exclusive autosport comes into pit lane. He's going to make changes, as is the number seven of Bajoy Guard for D-Force Racing. They're all coming in. A bunch of them are making the run in here. The number 55 of Francesco Pizzi. Looks like the 47 of Jackson Lee in as well. So look for tire changes and adjustments with 11 minutes remaining.
So the team's really taking advantage of what is now a somewhat abbreviated qualifying session as you're, you're only going to get a certain number of laps, be it yeah. 10 or 12. So if you run four or five laps on a car, on the uh, set of tires, you've extracted what you can out of them. It's in your best interest to qualify on another fresh set to uh, hopefully set another quick time and maybe make an adjustment and go quicker than your previous lap. And Michael D. Orlando, last year's champion at USF 2000, the guy up top right now by two tenths of a second over Christian Brooks. And remember, the Christian Brooks story, obviously very interesting. Last year, making the move from USF 2000 to USF Pro 2000, looked fantastic in qualifying, was sitting P1 and walled it in turn number three. Hit the right front, trying to pinch on turn number three. Straight across the racetrack, hard into the wall of turn number four. Literally rode off a race car, and we did not see him for the rest of the season. The budget was gone. He has been able to put things back together. OFTV, the sponsor on the side of that race car. Uh, fantastic for him to be able to potentially come back here and have some retribution, Todd, after what was, of course, could have been a career-ending deal, not, not for himself, not physically, but for his budget, the financial opportunity to be able to go racing. They were able to get some sponsorship, get him back on the race car, a very talented young American. That's the uh, reality of, uh, of motorsports. He is yeah. trying to find the budget to put together the program. All of these drivers, all of these teams work extremely hard through the offseason to secure partners, to bring enough budget, to run their program and have what they need to run for the full season. But as you mentioned, in the case of Christian Brooks last year, it's like, we don't have any more money to buy another race car to do this. And, That's and it. their problems were limited. And you think about the fact that these cars are probably worth about $165,000 when they're prepped and ready to go onto the racetrack. So a lot of money for a USF Pro 2000 race car. And again, everybody doing the best they can to try to put the funding together to try to find their way into Indy next and then up into the NTT IndyCar Series. But it takes a lot of funding, a lot of investors and partners to be able to make it all happen. Right now, it's still Michael D. Orlando on top of the 110.558. Lap six, the best for D. Orlando. I believe he may still be out onto the racetrack right now. One of them coming in. Another driver into pit lane here. We're watching them both on the camera and on the side. That, that is D. Orlando. He's got the USF Pro Championship Scholarship livery on the car. So the number one for the reigning champion of the lower tier into pit lane. The thing about that is there's only eight minutes and 20 seconds left. Is it too late for Dee Orlando for turn three motorsports? Four drivers under the tent for turn three here this weekend. And the interesting is, this is when it kind of you put a little bit of the onus on the, the crew as well. Uh, we don't have the full IndyCar quick jacks. You know, they're not doing 8.5 second stops. Let's put it that way. It takes a bit more time, but the, drive, the, the crew has to be very methodical. Get the job done, use the quick jack. There's only so many people that can be over the wall to work on the car. So they've got to be smart. They've got to not make any mistakes and get their driver back out. And and that's with the, the teams too, as limited size. Each driver does not have a full crew to go along no. with their car. So it is the team that looks after all of the cars in that one stable. So you, you'll want to stagger those stops if you are changing for new tires. Kiko Porto back out onto the racetrack. He's got up to second spot. Kiko Porto goes to P2 and only nine hundredths of a second behind D Orlando. So hey, you, you want to you look right now whether or not this program works. Does USF 2000 develop you for the next level? Kiko Porto, champion two years ago, the Orlando reigning champion. This is the last two USF 2000 champions sitting first and second in the order. Christian Brooks, multi-time winner in the category as well. Miles Rowe, of course, multi-time winner last year as well. So the, uh, the drivers with that USF 2000 experience and experience on this racetrack taking full advantage of it. Currently set one, two, three, four, right ahead of pit lane. So it's the last couple of laps. Oh, we do have one more. New one coming into pit lane here with six and a half minutes to go. That'll be a quick change. That is the number 12 of Kiko Porto. So I thought he had gone back out onto the racetrack. Driver currently sitting in third into the pit lane for his adjustment. And again, when you've got you know, a couple of drivers, there was only two in his team, but when you've got four guys in your team, there's only so many guys you have as a crew as well. Miles Rose gone to P1. The Paps Racing Force Indy driver to the top of the charts. He was very impressive here last year. If not for in an incident with Thomas Naveau, he probably would have won the first race of the year, end up coming back and winning the next day. Chase Denmark, his teammate, sliding through to get the win in the opening round of USF 2000 last year. But Miles Rowe coming out of the gate nicely right now. Five hundredths of a second ahead of Michael D. Orlando. Rowe, D. Orlando, Porto, Brooks, and now Reese Ushijima has worked his way up into the third spot. Ushijima 
a driver with a lot of experience as well. We'll talk a lot more about this young American who did not come through the USF Pro Championships, went straight to Europe and has been running in a number of the European Championships over the last couple of years. We're thrilled to have him back here stateside for 2023. Great, again, the opportunity to compete against the competition and have a, have a budget that is attainable here. And he'll be a beneficiary as well from that experience in Europe because the competition over there, it's different, but it's intense yes. right from the start of uh, whether it's F4, or F3 and moving up the ladder there. Good jump up there as well for Jordan Missick. Paps Racing sitting one, three, and seven with Roe Missig and Jace Denmark. Jordan Missig in his second season of USF Pro 2000 competition. Had some flashes of brilliance late in the season last year. But, you know, Todd, you take a full season of competition. You know, you're in the middle of it, right? You're in the middle of a fight throughout the season. That off season, when you can kind of do some testing and kind of reset, Jordan's run a, he's run a bunch of different stuff. He ran in the uh, Lamborghini Super Trofeo series as well. We're on a bunch of different things. That year you had is now, you know, into your mind. It's set, right? You're not in the middle of the fight anymore, so you can process it all over the offseason. And when you come back to start the new season, everything's rote. You've already been here before. It's already ingrained in your mind. That's where I think you're going to see out of Jordan missing this year. Yeah, you don't you don't have that relearning of, yes. of all of the things that you got for the first time last year because everything's new and everything is the first time. And it's, I, I described it yesterday as drinking from a fire hose a little bit. Yeah, for and sure. And it's just that's, that's kind of what you get in the first year. In the second year, it's a lot easier to process. It's like everything's slowing down just a little for you. Agreed. Miles Rowe on top still at the time winding down. Four, la uh, four minutes rather remaining in qualifying. Our first official qualifying session of the 2023 USF Pro Championships. My name's Rod, Rob Howden, joined by the voice of the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg, Todd Lewis. As we watch qualifying here, our USF 2000 drivers will be back out here later on today. I want to say 4.30 scheduled qualifying time for USF 2000. We, of course, been kind of changing things around. We're back on schedule now. Rowe, Pizzi, Brooks, Brown, and Ushijima. We are changing things up over the last couple of minutes as Christian Brooks now goes to P1. Move the Santa Clarita, California driver back to the top. And again, man, what a difference a year makes. Let's see if he gets through this qualifying run because he was P1 at the start of the season last year in qualifying, but walled it, as I said, in turn three. And the resulting damage put him on the sidelines for the entire season. Interested to see what happens in these final three minutes with those that stopped later for tires. Michael Orlando, one of them. Kiko Porto, another, who were late to make that tire swap in this qualifying That's session. That's a really uh, good point. They're obviously going to hit that optimum window of those Cooper tires a little bit later on in the session here. It does take a couple of laps to get them, like we said, number one, you're cleaning off that compound on the outside of the tire. You're getting them up to temperature a little bit. You're getting that scuff on them. Once you get exactly to the point where the tire pressure shoe set, hit where they need to be, the, 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 the temp gets to where it needs to be. Remember, these cars, every lap, getting lighter and lighter. They're burning more fuel. The drivers have to now find open racetrack. You don't want to get behind a driver who's a bit slower than you, because that's going to check you up. You need to find the right driver. you got to find the right gap. And when everything is absolutely perfect, it all comes down to the driver putting the laps together. You guys put 12 corners together to qualify on pole. And it's it's uh, the drivers out doing it right now. Michael Orlando has climbed back up to fourth quickest with just over two minutes remaining. Kiko Porto right behind him as well. Those drivers now getting the best out of that second set of tires. So could we have some heroics here at the end of the session? A couple of drivers who have won USF 2000 championships. The Orlando and Porto, fourth and fifth, but they were late stoppers to get the fresh Cooper tires. Will they turn up the wick? Can they put the lap down? As they work their way, this is turn number 12, the big 180 degree wide sweeping hairpin. You can see the cars oftentimes right at the apex have that little bit of understeers. They're trying to get the car to rotate and back on the throttle quickly. You go on too early and you got too much input, it's gonna push off the racetrack. You have to have it just rotated and then roll back on that throttle so that you're able to keep all the power down minute and a half remaining qualifying here. Christian Brooks on top by only by eight hundredths of a second over Kiko Porto who has gone to second. Porto to P2. Does the Brazilian lay down a flyer to go P1 to start off the 2023 season? Brooks, Pizzi, Porto, Roe and Ushijima. De Orlando sixth, Brown seventh, De Alba eighth, Jen Denmark ninth, and Jordan missing in the tenth spot. Trouble for Joel Granforth. He has not put a time in. Not sure what happened to Joel for exclusive autosport. That'll put him behind the eight ball of both races. Remember, your fastest lap for race number one, lap number two, set the grid for race 
number two. So the bottom line is here, Joel Granfors goes sort of the tail of the field for both races. Tough for the Swedish driver. Under a minute remaining now in this qualifying session. Don't forget that the, the timing line is not at the start finish line for qualifying. It is prior to the entrance to pit lane. So we'll watch and make sure that they get the they do not take the checkered flag too soon and they're able to, if they're able to start one more late lap. 23 seconds remain on the clock. So a number of drivers, uh, these guys you're seeing coming through turn number one will not get back. This will be the final lap for them. It's Brooks, Pizzi, Porto, Rowe, and Ushijima. Turn three, TJ Speed, D, uh, D Force, uh, Caps Racing, and J. Howard Driver Development. Five teams in the top five. This is what I was talking about when you compare this series to an FIA F3, where you have to be with a certain team to be able to win races. That is not the case here in USF Pro 2000. Any team can win on the grid. It's all about getting it done. Checkered flag flying, so as uh, Todd mentioned, the timing line out of turn number 10. So these drivers with time still to lay that final lap down. Checkered flag flying, Christian Brooks trying to come back after what happened last year where he wrecked on the final lap of qualifying to end his season and lose the pole. Let's see who pulls it out here. Everybody with that final run potentially through the timing stripe. It's still Brooks on top over Pizzi, Porto, Rowe, and Ushijima. And I haven't seen anybody make a run at it yet as the final couple of drivers coming across the line. We'll wait till they all come through. You see a couple drivers still at speed. That's one of the TJ Speed cars in those all white livery. He'll work his way back down. If that's Pizzi, he may be able to throw one down. Right now, it's still Christian Brooks. A couple of drivers, a turn three car coming through. Not seeing anybody moving on live timing as of yet. Waiting for that last car to come through here as well for TJ Speed, and I think that's gonna be it. So you talk about a storyline for the young driver from Santa Clarita, California, Christian Brooks for turn three motorsport. His career changing so much last year was the fastest driver. He's won a couple of times here in USF 2000. Comes out as a rookie in USF Pro 2000 last season. Hits the wall in turn number three. Right across the track, hard into the outside wall of turn four. Writes off his race car uh, running for exclusive autosport. That was it. The budget was not there to come back. We have not seen him for essentially one year, and Christian Brooks showing the talent, comes right back, qualifies on the pole, not by much. How about 11 thousandths of a second over Francesco Pizzi, who went quicker on the final lap. He's not able to get by. Brooks P1, Pizzi second. That'll be your front row for race number one. Kiko Porto, uh, Miles Rowe, and Reese Ushijima ends up rounding out your top five, and I want to point this out one more time. Five different teams in the top five Turn three for Brooks, uh, Pizzi for TJ Speed, Porto for D-Force Racing, Rove for Paps Racing uh, with Force Indy, and Reese Usajima for J. Howard Driver Development. There is the equality that we have across the board in the paddock for Pro 2000. Okay, so the five teams that you mentioned in the top five all are within just about one-tenth of a second <laughs> in terms of time. And how big a dragon did Christian Brooks slay by getting through the qualifying today to come back, put it on pole again, and stick it this time and make sure that he will start P1. And what was he thinking on that last lap? Did he give himself maybe a couple more feet coming through turn number three? I'd have to think he probably did, but man, as a young driver, I've been following through uh, karting over the last number of years, coming up through his you know, California karting. We watched him, of course, do a bunch of F4 racing. He was actually a driver in uh, Rallycross for a while there as well, the Red Bull Rallycross series, but of course came into this USF Pro Championships a couple of years ago. Two great seasons in USF 2000. They, the ill-fated run last year to start the season, but man, way to get out of the gate there for Turn 3 Motorsport. That's Peter Demps Peter Mandy Dempsey's team, and they'll be thrilled there. You go back to uh, Michael D. Orlando as well in sixth, and Jonathan Brown in seventh. They end up putting three drivers in the top seven, so they'll be pleased with that. Jace Denmark eighth, Salvador Day Alba ninth, and Yuvin Sunder Murthy rounding out the top ten. Todd, officially the season's underway. We got our first grid, and we'll go racing tomorrow, as we know, for the uh, Pro 2000 drivers. But man, great to have things underway. Uh, a pretty solid session, a little bit of a, sl a shutdown at one point, but otherwise, some excitement at the end. That's what we like out of this program. And we'll look forward to more of it with uh, the USF 2000 series coming up later on this afternoon, and then we'll uh, have the race for the USF Pro 2000 tomorrow. Thanks, Rob Howden. You'll be back to join us a little bit later on this afternoon. We'll take a quick break. Indy Next is coming up. The NTT IndyCar.